right, so the purpose of this video is to review the procedure of unit conversion. Now I've given you all of these, the conversion factors that you might need in order to complete these conversions. Okay, so let's look at the first example. How many centigrams are in 2.49 times 10 to the third milligrams? Okay, so really quickly, my first step, as always, is going to be to write my given. So my given here is 2.49 times 10 to the third milligrams. Okay, crisscross swoosh. Now, if you look at your conversion factors that I give you, I tell you the relationship between, and this is gonna be a, look a little weird, I tell you the relationship between milli and your base unit. So here it says millimeters, but that could have been milligrams as well. So I tell you one milligram equals 10 to the negative third grams. And I tell you that one centigram is 10 to the negative second grams. Remember, the meters and grams are interchangeable. I don't tell you the relationship between milligrams and centigrams. So unless you can do that in your head, which good on you if you can, I'm going to actually make this a two-step problem. Okay? Instead of going directly from milligrams to centigrams, I'm going to go first from milligrams. So I'm going to get out of milligrams by putting it on bottom. And I'm going to first get into grams. So I'm going to put grams on top. Okay. Now I'm in grams, but I don't want to stay in grams because I'm not asked about grams. I'm asked about centigrams. So I'm going to put centigrams on top. Okay. But I do know these relationships. So the relationship between milligrams and grams. One milligram equals 10 to the negative third grams. And one centigram equals 10 to the negative second grams. Okay, so now I'm going to find my answer. So I'm going to take 2.49 times 10 to the third. I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the negative third. And I'm going to divide that by 10 to the negative second. What I get for my final answer is 2.49 times 10 to the second my units are centigrams. Okay. I'm going to really quickly double check sig figs and units. 2.49 has three sig figs. 2.49 has three sig figs as well. My units should be centigrams. I put centigrams, so I'm going to box off my answer. Okay. Let's look at the next example. How many centimeters cubed are in 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed? So first step, I'm going to put my given. So my given is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed. Okay. I want to get out of meters cubed by putting it on bottom, meters cubed. And the unit I'm asked to get into is centimeters cubed. Okay. Let's look at the relationship that I'm given. I'm told one centimeter equals 10 to the negative second meter. So I'm going to rewrite that below. Okay. But the important thing for you to note is here, I have centimeters cubed and meters cubed. I'm not asking about just centimeters and meters. So what you need to do is you need to take this relationship, and now instead of squaring it like we've done in previous problems, we're now going to cube it which is fine. Okay. So one cubed is one, so one centimeter cubed equals, okay, 10 to the negative second cubed. So I'm gonna rewrite this just so it's easy for you to see. Remember, if you raise an exponent to an exponent, you actually end up multiplying the exponents. So you might be tempted to say 10 to the negative fifth. It's not, you multiply two by three, so that is going to be 10 to the negative sixth and your units are meters cubed. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in my values. One centimeter cubed is 10 to the negative six meters cubed. So my final answer, I'm gonna take 4.5 times 10 to the negative six, and I'm gonna divide it by 10 to the negative six. And if you notice, those actually the 10 to the negative six is cancel, and you end up with just 4.5, and my units are centimeters cubed. Let's double check units and sig figs. 4.5 has two sig figs. 4.5, two sig figs. Centimeters cubed are my units. And I am good to go. Okay. 
Let's look at the next example. Okay, how many pounds does two kilograms of cheese weigh? So I have 2.00 kilograms. That's my given. Okay, let's look at the units I'm given to figure out where I'm going to go. Because I know I want to get out of kilograms, but where am I going to go exactly? Okay, so kilograms to pounds is my goal. So I've got that relationship right there. Okay, one kilogram is 2.205 pounds. Okay, so I'm going to just plug in my units and then I'll plug in the relationship. Kilograms goes on bottom. I want to get into pounds. So I'm going to put pounds on top. And just as a refresher, there are 2.205 pounds in one kilogram. Okay, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take two kilograms and I'm going to multiply by 2.205. So the unrounded value that I get is 4.41 by unit are pounds. Okay, let's double check sig figs and make sure I have the correct number of sig figs. Okay. 2.00 because there's a decimal present, I'm going to count from left to right. So my first significant digit is a 2. I can start counting on a 2, so that's 1, 2, 3 sig figs. 4.41 has 3 sig figs as well. So that is an acceptable answer. Okay. Let's look at the next one. How many inches are in 1.00 kilometers? So I have 1.00 kilometers, that's my given. And I need to figure out how I'm going to get into inches. I don't think I have a, real, a direct relationship like I did in the previous problem. So let's look. All right. I know the relationship between kilometers and meters, right? Because this is the same thing as saying one kilometer equals 10 to the third meters. Awesome. I also know the relationship between centimeters and inches. So you might be saying, okay, kilometers, I could go from kilometers to meters, and then to get into inches, I'd have to be in centimeters. So I could go then from kilometers to meters. I know the relationship between meters and centimeters. And now I know the relationship between centimeters and inches. So if you're wondering, is this really going to be a three-step problem? The answer is yes, it is. So let's do it. I'm going to write out all of the relationships up above here just to remind us of them. So one kilometer equals 10 to the third meters. I also know that one centimeter equals 10 to the negative second meters. And the last relationship that I gave you was 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. All right, so let's use those and get me into inches. So I'm going to put kilometers on bottom to get out of that unit. And I'm first going to get into meters because I know that relationship. I don't want to stop there, though, because I don't want to be in meters. I want to be in inches. I'm going to get out of meters. And we get myself into, well, what do I know the relationship between meters and, well, centimeters? Again, I don't want to stop there because I don't want to be in centimeters. I want to be in inches. So, yes, it's a three-step problem. I'm going to get out of centimeters, and now I'm going to get into inches. Now I can put all of the relationships that I just wrote into the problem. So, I know that there are 10 to the third meters and a kilometer. I know that one centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters, and I know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So when I do the math for this, I'm going to take one, multiply by 10 to the third, divide by 10 to the negative second, and then divide by 2.54. And the answer I get unrounded is 3.93700. And I'm just going to stop because it's not going to be that many super kids times 10 to the 4th. Okay, so let's figure out units and let's figure out sig figs. First, let's figure out sig figs. 1.00, there is a decimal present. Let me count from left to right. Leftmost number is a 1, so 1, 2, 3 sig figs. Okay, so 3.93, I want 1, 2, 3 sig figs. The 7 does round the 3 up. 
So I've got 3.94 times 10 to the fourth, and I am in inches. Let's make sure this answer makes sense. One kilometer is a pretty decent distance, right? It's a thousand meters. Does it make sense that the number of inches would be a very large number, 10 to the fourth? Yeah, because the inch, the unit inch, is very small compared to a kilometer. So that answer does, definitely does make sense. Okay. Last question. How many ounces are in 15 kilograms? So I'm going to start off, I'm going to write my given. And what we're going to do before we get started is we're going to look at all the relationships up above to figure out where we want to go. So I want to go from kilograms into ounces. Okay. Well, I know the relationship between kilograms and pounds. Okay. Um, and I also know, ooh, I also know the relationship between pounds and ounces. So can I use that relationship? Those two relationships? Absolutely. The other thing you could do is you could go from kilograms to grams. Okay, because I know that relationship. Then if you notice, I've got a grams to pound relationship. And then from pounds, you could get into ounces. That would be a three-step problem, which is fine. Okay. The way you do it doesn't matter, just as long as you're using the correct conversion factors and the correct setup. Okay, so let's use the kilogram to pound and then the pound to ounce relationship. Now really quickly notice, I didn't capitalize this kilo, but I capitalized this kilo. Sometimes you'll see it capitalized, sometimes you won't. It doesn't matter because there's only one kilo. There isn't like, it doesn't make it smaller or bigger. So just note that, that that doesn't matter. Okay, so one kilogram equals two point, plug in that relationship, that one kilogram equals 2.205 pounds. And the other relationship that I noted is the fact that one pound is 16 ounces. Okay, so let's plug in everything. Okay, kilograms go on bottom. Okay, I can't get into ounces yet. I need to go from kilograms. Now I can first get into pounds. Okay, but I don't want to stay in pounds. I want to get into ounces. So I'm, to, so I'm going to put pounds on the bottom, and I'm going to put ounces up top. And I have all of these relationships now. So uh, one kilogram is 2.205 pounds. Okay, one pound is 16 ounces. So when I do this, I'm going to take 15, I'm going to multiply by 2.205, and then I'm going to multiply by 16. And the unrounded value I get is 5.292 times 10 to the second ounces. Okay. Let's figure out sig figs. Okay. 15 has one, two sig figs. Five point, so I need two sig figs, because remember, this is a relationship this is a relationship. That's why I'm only looking at my given when I'm figuring out sig figs. So I have one, two sig figs. So this is going to round to 5.3 times 10 to the second ounces. Okay. I've got units. I've got the correct number of sig figs. That being said, remember, this number is in scientific notation, and so was the previous answer. If I wrote, instead of 5.3 times 10 to the second, if I wrote it as 530 in standard notation, you would get the exact same, that is the exact same number. So either one of those is perfectly fine. Same thing up above. If I wrote this as 39,400 inches, and put that as my answer, you get 100% credit. So make sure you are showing all of this work because while some of you might be able to do it in your head, I give partial credit for showing the work. 